Our goal for today, the best snatch tutorial on YouTube. Let's get started with the setup. There are three areas we look at when getting set up for the snatch. Number one is foot width, number two is grip width, and number three is hip height. When we're coaching foot width, we ask a beginner to stand where they feel like they can jump from the most powerful position, not too wide, not too narrow. Then when we ask them to squat down and grab the barbell, we ask if they can feel their full foot. We ask if they can feel underneath their big toe, underneath their little toe, and then the palm or the heel, sorry, of their foot. If they can feel those three positions while gripping the floor and then loading their legs, that's what we would call an ideal foot position for beginners. Over time, you can play with this. Some people find that going a little bit wider means that they don't have to jump their feet out as far. Some people feel like by starting narrower, they're loading their legs better. Uh, this all comes down to personal preference after a while. Grip width. When we start coaching grip width for people, we start by grabbing the barbell and finding the position where it sits in the hip crease. There are two ways we can do this. The first way is we can hold the bar and then lift our legs and then as the bar lifts, we take our hands wider and wider until the bar stops lifting. The second way to do it is to grab the bar, bend over a little bit while you can find where your legs meet your torso and then just keep moving the hands out wider and wider. The big focus is going to be on keeping the arms nice and tight. It doesn't mean retracting, it just means down, being able to flare those lats when you're in the start position. If you flare the lats and the bar is sitting too low, you'll need to take the hands a little bit wider. The advantage to going wider would be that you do not have to pull the bar as high. A narrower grip has the advantage of being less taxing on the wrists. So sometimes for beginners, we actually get them to start a little bit narrower than where we would like them, just because their wrists aren't used to holding or supporting weight overhead. Hip height. There's two ways that we teach this. For most beginners, we actually coach them to walk up to the barbell so that the bar is sitting uh, over the top of their first lace. And then we get them to grab the bar and then pull themselves into position without the bar moving. This is one of the easier ways for coaching someone to find their hip height. The other way, if we were to give a general blanket rule, is that we just want the hips to start slightly above where the knees are when you're in that set position. The pro to sitting a little bit lower is that you can load your quads and you can take a little bit of pressure off your back. Uh, if you have long legs, this isn't necessarily an advantage because you'll end up going around your knees. Pro for starting a little bit higher than above parallel is that you don't have to navigate the knees, which for beginners can be quite difficult figuring out how the bar comes back into them. The downside to starting with our hips quite high is it just doesn't load the legs as well as they could be loaded. One of the biggest errors we see is when people try to replicate their favorite Chinese lifters and end up setting up so far upright with their hips so far below parallel that they end up with their shoulders behind the bar. If you're six foot six and you're trying to lift like Lu Jun, it's just not gonna happen in that start position. You're probably gonna be someone who has to get set with their hips a little bit higher. Step two guys, creating tension. There are gonna be three areas we look at as well for creating tension. Number one is breathing and bracing. Number two is bracing or setting our upper back. And then number three is taking slack out of the barbell. Our favorite way for breathing and bracing is to set the ribs in a position that allows for a big breath to get in and stay nice and tight. We have to be very careful when we're hyperextending our back and flaring our ribs. This can lead to a suboptimal brace and actually make us weaker off the floor. When we're talking about bracing or setting our upper back, I like to coach long arms so the lats are nice and tight. You can pull the shoulders back a little bit, but the same issue we talked about before. If you hyperextend and go scaps backwards and down and you end up overextending, you end up losing that ability to brace. And if you're pulling heavy weights from the floor, it just puts us in a weaker and more compromised position. Fast slack. Initially, when we coach lifters, we actually coach them to push relatively slowly from the floor until they reach above the knee before accelerating. How we coach this is we coach this by educating them on taking slack out of the barbell. If you've ever watched some of the world's best lifters, if they've got a heap of plates on the barbell, what you'll notice is that 
they don't start accelerating until the last plate is off the floor because if they rip it too hard and the bar jolts, it takes momentum away from them. There are some lifters out there who do pull and pray, but from a beginner's perspective, we always coach people to take slack out of the barbell, own their positions up into mid thigh, and then go from there. By creating tension, setting the brace, setting the lats, and then taking slack out of the barbell, you put yourself in a really, really good position for the pull. So starting the lift. There are two ways that we can start a lift from the floor. We have dynamic and we have a static start. A static start is where we do what we talked about before. We brace, we set the lats, and then we get nice and tight before taking slack out of the bar. And all it looks like is that you get and you hold the position before you push the world away. That's what we would call a static start. A dynamic start can be from the top down or from the bottom up is where you are taking your breath in, you are getting ready to go and you pull yourself into bar and when you hit the right position, you push the world away. Uh, some athletes find it much more explosive. They feel like they're pulling their muscles back, getting ready for them to fire. Uh, this again, just comes down to personal preference. We always start all of our beginners with static starts. This is because we're trying to look for consistency in the position that they pull from off the floor. If we do a dynamic start and every single rep has a different height, then every single rep is going to be off. The most crucial part of the lift is the first few inches off the floor. If you get the first few inches wrong, the rest of the lift doesn't really matter. Let's actually start to look at pulling mechanics. So normally when we coach Olympic lifting, we have first pull, second pull, third pull, transition, all that type of stuff. We're going to keep it relatively simple today. We're just going to go pull to mid thigh. We're going to go the explosion and then we're going to go the catch position. So pull to mid thigh. I should actually change this one to push to mid thigh. I much prefer people pushing the world away than thinking pull. When people think about pulling, they think about using their back. They think about using their upper body. Our main goal when pushing from the floor is to make sure that our legs are loaded and that the bar comes back into us nicely. So the three areas we're going to look at when pushing to mid thigh is going to be bar path, timing and speed, and the positions that we would like to hit. If we talk about bar path and speed and timing, that should actually answer a lot of our questions coming into the, the third section, which is the positions we would like to hit. We've learned how to brace, we've learned how to get set, we've taken tension out of the bar as we're starting to push the world away. From a bar path's perspective, straight up is fine, but what we would really like to see is we would like to see that bar travel into the lifter over the first few inches. If you're someone who's quite tall, it will come back in a significant amount. If you're someone who's average height like me, it might only come back in an inch or so. We talked about earlier in the setup that the bar wants to kind of start over the ball of our foot. When the bar starts over the ball of our foot, we would like it to be over the middle of our foot when it starts to pass the knee. You can see this in a lot of high level lifters when you see them hitting that kind of 90 degree shin angle. Once the knees hit 90 degrees, the goal is not to shove the knees as far forward as possible. It is to start preparing to jump or to explode up. Different levers will mean that we will start that at different parts of the thigh. So speed and timing. When we're coaching beginners, we would like quite a controlled first pull and getting ready to load into that explosion section of the lift. Now, the better you get and the more accurate you get, you can push as fast off the floor as you like. The main difference or the main goal needs to be that when you do get to that explosion part, that there is an acceleration. If you looked at it on a graph, it needs to be controlled and then exploded. The better you get, you can start really fast as long as you finish faster. If we were to break down the positions that we would like to hit, I actually don't care if our shins hit dead on 90 degrees. It's just something that I like to happen kind of organically as the lifter pulls the bar back into them. Some people's knees will be a little bit further forward. Uh, the only thing I would say is I would never want to see them go behind that 90 degree point. If we looked at it nice and simply, we would like to keep a full foot contact with the floor for as long as possible. The bar comes back into us. The knee hits around 90 degrees. And then by the time we're at mid thigh, we're already starting to prepare to jump. This should look like the torso is slightly upright and the bar wants to still remain underneath that armpit. All right, the money shot, the explosion, where all the kind of magic happens. Everybody has seen those lifters who are, it looks like they're barely gonna make the deadlift. And then when they hit mid thigh, they explode. And next thing you know, they are underneath the barbell. This comes from hours and hours of practice, thousands of, tens of thousands of reps and 
focusing on what timing suits you best. Again, this comes down to consistency and what you have practiced the most. If in training you have like a two pronged approach where you go one, two, jump, you need to keep that up when you're getting to heavier weights. So the two sections we look at when we're looking at the explosion portion of the snatch is contact and speed underneath the barbell. The contact we coach at Iron Tribe is a brush, not a bang. We never want to put any forward displacement on the barbell. The barbell, after making contact, should go as vertical as possible. If we look at some of the old texts, it will actually show the bars goes, goes forward slightly, but the better lifters minimize that, that forward movement. So to keep it simple, just focus on keeping it close and as vertical as possible. If you're worried that it is going too far forward, what you can do, uh, Danny Camargo taught me this years ago, is you can draw a box on your feet when you're performing snatches. And as long as it stays inside that box, you're fine, you haven't pushed it too far forward. When coaching people how to learn how to make contact, uh, a way that we've used in the past, which we used from Max Ada, Tority, um, Zach Talander, was that we would take the barbell away from us make contact and then push it up. Um, another way that you can try to learn how to make contact is to actually start at mid thigh and then drag it into your hips. So you start at mid thigh, extend the legs, drag into the hips until it hits the actual hip crease. It doesn't come off the hips just yet. And then on the next one, you would do the same thing and you would drive through the barbell, lifting the elbows up. Those are two ways. The first way that we used to teach, which was um, what we kind of mentioned earlier, that in and away, sometimes it created more problems than what it was worth. For some lifters, it works amazingly. So those are two really good ways you can focus on learning how to make contact. Speed underneath. The common question we get from weightlifters and CrossFit, how can we get faster underneath the barbell? From a technical standpoint, we would like to finish as vertical as possible. This typically means that the shoulders are gonna be slightly behind the hips when you hit extension, and in the very next frame, you're going to go down while the barbell continues up. Some ways for developing speed underneath the bar, crazily enough, are actually go lighter than what you think and work on getting faster and faster. From a technical standpoint, you can learn this by actually focusing on staying in contact with the ground a little bit longer and not leaving the floor when you jump. What I mean by this is when you see people who are relatively new to snatching and they physically jump, hold extension, leave the floor by two to three inches before changing direction. If we look at some of the world's best lifters, they actually change direction before their feet move out. This is only something that you would practice and you can practice this with no feet snatches. You can practice this with a no feet snatch into a snatch where you learn how to time that extension, boom, into moving underneath the barbell. The catch position. So when coaching beginners on the catch, we actually coach them to try to punch through their lockout, starting with the feet and then the elbows almost happening at the same time. Um, initially, it needs to be quite forceful. You need to learn how to punch yourself underneath that barbell. We also coach all of our beginners to hold the catch for one to two seconds. People are too quick to copy their favorite lifter where you see them only doing half reps. These lifters have developed really strong upper backs from doing all of the reps as a beginner. The reason why we coach all of our beginners to hold their catch position for two seconds is one, it tells them, gives them immediate feedback. Did we finish it too far forward? Did we finish it too far back? Was I on my toes? Was I on my heels? The other reason why we coach people to hold their bottom position is so that they can start to develop the strength in their upper back. Too often we see people miss snatches that were high enough and close enough to make their upper back just wasn't strong enough in conjunction with their core. Fantastic guys, I hope you got a lot out of that. We're gonna try putting out content similar to this that is gonna be much more in depth. Uh, we're gonna keep it nice and simple and we're gonna hopefully give you guys the tools to teach yourselves how to lift. Cheers guys.